In this video, we're going to talk about LIFO, which is an inventory cost assumption that's short for last in, first out. Last in, first out. And actually, kind of, we've got a similar process to LIFO. If you just watched our LIFO video, this will be uh, very easy for you to understand. But just to give you an idea, uh, let's say, let's use an example here. Uh, you, you have a firm that sells T-shirts. So you sell, let's say you sell 250 t-shirts at your company. And they're all the same type of t-shirt. They look exactly the same. There's just 250 of them. So when you sell these t-shirts, uh, you have to say, okay, well, well what's, my, what's my cost of goods sold? And what's going to be my ending inventory? Now, you might be wondering, okay, well, why, why is this necessary? You just bought the T-shirts and now you're selling them. Well, you might have made several different purchases of to the T-shirts. You might have bought some uh, one day, and then another day you bought some more T-shirts, and then you bought more, and you just kept throwing them all into one big pile in the corner of your store. So now you've got this pile of T-shirts, and now you haven't sold all of them. You just sold 250. And so you're trying to wonder, okay, out of this pile of T-shirts, which ones go to ending inventory and which ones go to cost of goods sold because you might have paid different prices for them even though they're the same T-shirts. So let's walk through an example of how we'd use LIFO uh, to compute cost of goods sold in, in our ending inventory. So let's say that when we sell those 250 T-shirts, so let's say we sell them on May 1st. May 1st, uh, we sell... 250 shirts and now what do we need to know we need to know cogs cost of goods sold and we need to know ending inventory I'll just have EI so here are the purchases right so this is the purchases we go and we take a look at the books and we say okay what what's our purchase history with these t-shirts and we see that on March 1st uh, we bought 200 t-shirts at a price of ten dollars a shirt for a total of two thousand dollars now, on March 16th, uh, we, we bought 150 shirts for $12 a piece. And then on April 3rd, uh, we bought another 225 shirts for $16 a pop. So now we don't know of the 250 that we sold, we don't know, oh, okay, this one was from the March 16th purchase because we just been throwing them into that pile. So now we have to make an assumption about which of these units from which dates, with which prices are going to go on the cost of goods sold and which are going to be in our ending inventory. And we're making an assumption, and in this case, we're going to assume last in, first out, LIFO. And what does that mean? That means that when we're talking about our cost of goods sold, so cost of goods sold, the last units in, the most recent purchases, are going to be the ones that go to cost of goods sold. So this 225 those 225 units that we purchased, those are the most recent units that we purchased. So they're going to go to cost of goods sold. So we're going to have 225 units here. But you see we sold 250. So we still have another 25. And where does that come from? Well, it's going to come from right here. right? We purchased uh, the, the next most recent was March 16th. So the 25 will come out of here. I'll just put a little 25 there. And that, those are also going to go to cost of goods sold. So now let's compute our cost of goods sold. Well, we've got the 225 times the 16, right? That's definitely going to be in there. And then we also have the 25 units here so that we get to 250. So those 25, and what price did they go at? Well, we, that was $12 a piece. So now we've got this little equation here right here this is this is going to be our cost of goods sold so we're going to have actually the top is going to be 3600 that's this part right here and then the bottom the 25 times 12 is 300 but now we have to add those two together and we get 3900 so our cost of goods sold is is 3900 dollars oh, apologize there 3900 now we have to compute our ending inventory. I'll just put it here. I'll just abbreviate this EI, our ending inventory. And now we just kind of kind of do the reverse. So we say, okay, well we didn't touch these two hundred units here, 
right? So those 200 units are still going to be in our inventory, right? So we're going to have 200, and that's going to be multiplied by the $10 price that we paid for them. Okay, and then we're going to have uh, another 125 units, and you say, well, why 125? Well, remember, we have 150 in this original purchase, but we already took out 25. It went to cost of goods sold, remember? So 150 minus 25 is 125. So we've got 125 units there that didn't go to cost of goods sold. And what's the price? Well, it was, it was $12 a shirt. So that's going to be $12. And so that's going to give us, on top, uh, this top portion is going to be 2000 and then we add to that the bottom, 125 times $12, which is 1500 And now we add these two together, and that gives us uh, $3,500. And that's our, that's our ending inventory. Now, bear in mind that LIFO is better at matching uh, costs with sales with revenue in periods of rising prices, which is usually the case in, in the real world, and it's what we have here in this example. Look, over time, the price we pay for units for t-shirts is going up, right? So when we actually, when we, when we have LIFO, right, what we're doing is we're taking the most recent cost, which is probably the most relevant cost, right, what we had to pay last week instead of what we had to pay, you know, uh, a, a month or so ago or two. So we're taking that, that more recent cost, and, and that's actually more likely to go to cost of goods sold, and so we're matching that uh, with, our current, with our current sales. Uh, so it's better with matching, but there's a problem, and that's that LIFO, uh, when, when, we have, when we keep taking goods out of the most recent uh, purchases, well, sometimes we get these ones uh, that, that are from a couple months ago that are they're ending up in ending inventory, and over time, you might have something that, you know, five, six, seven years ago, you had these purchases and they're still in inventory because you keep using, you, you've got LIFO keeps taking the most recent goods out. And so what happens is, if when you have some case like, for example, a railroad or something that has some kind of inventory from, you know, 1874, and then they go and sell it, uh, well, then you're going to have a really low cost being matched uh, you know, with with your current revenue, and actually, uh, that's that's kind of a problem. Um, and you call those 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 old inventory buildups. You call those those are actually uh, LIFO layers, right? So it's like this old layer of inventory uh, that that hasn't hasn't been liquidated, and then all of a sudden you go and and you sell it, and then now you have to it finally goes to cost of goods sold and there's kind of this mismatching of what you sold the items for versus what you paid and so that's actually a, a thing called LIFO liquidation uh, which, which we're going to talk about in another video.